and welcome. I was speaking with our next guest before the cameras went hot and saying, you know, there's a perception that openly gay politicians seem to only exist in San Francisco, but here we have an exception. The San Mateo Harbor Commissioner, Robert Bernardo, welcome. Thank you, David. Do you think that was true for a while that people thought, oh, the only people who get elected uh, as openly gay politicians are in San Francisco and you're in San Mateo? Yeah, I do think that that's, that's the perception, especially with San Francisco. Everyone thinks it's a San Francisco thing. But that is really changing. I mean, if you take a look at San Mateo County, for example, you've got Rich Gordon. And then further south, you've got Evan Lowe. So, I mean, I really think that it's changing on the peninsula. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that at one point you were thinking of running for South San Francisco City Council. How did you go from wanting to be a council member to being a harbor commissioner? Well, actually, for the longest time, I've been saying no. You know, yeah, people yeah. have been asking me, well, why don't you run for South San Francisco City Council? And year after year, I say no, no, no. And having been on the Planning Commission and the Personnel Board, it seemed like that was the logical next step. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I just, my heart wasn't in there. And the opportunity came up for Harbor District Commission, mm -hmm. and I took it. Um, several of the elected officials in the Democratic Party said, we think you should go for this. Yeah. It would be appropriate. So for you were recruited in a sense. In a sense, yes, at 7.30 a.m. the day before the filing deadline. And they said, oh, by the way, you have 24 hours to collect your signatures and fill out the papers. Yeah, so what was your response? This is not possible or? I said, you got to be crazy. Yeah. And so they said, oh, no, 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 no. We think it's feasible. Why don't you give it a try? And mm -hmm. so I went to the uh, county registrar, filled out all the papers. And mm -hmm. before I knew it, I was getting sworn in as a candidate. And that began the campaign. So for the uninitiated, what yeah. does a harbor commissioner do? Basically, a harbor commissioner sets overall policy that includes environmental and fiscal policy for the harbor district, which includes two public harbors in San Mateo County, mm -hmm. one at Oyster Point Marina in South San Francisco and one at Pillar Point Harbor near Half Moon Bay. Now, these four people who live in the Bay Area are well-known harbors and, yes. and, and peerages. Um, what do you think is the, the thing that is least known about these uh, offerings? I think the thing that's least known is that Pillar Point is actually a thriving commercial fishing harbor. And Oyster Point, what a lot of people don't realize is in about a year's time, there will be a thriving commuter ferry that will connect South San Francisco to the East Bay, mm -hmm. and that's very exciting. How much is what is going on vis-a-vis -vis America's Cup and kind of this, I don't say resurgence, but this renewed fascination with everything about the water in San Francisco? I mean, here in, in November is gonna be the 75th anniversary of the Bay Bridge. Next May, 75th anniversary of the Golden Gate Bridge. 105th anniversary of the port. Brand new Bay Bridge opening in 2013. America's Cup, which is going to invigorate the whole bay. I mean, suddenly being harbor commissioners become kind of sexy. <laughs> Well, I do think that there's going to be a lot of activity in San Francisco Bay in the coming years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for us, it's a great opportunity, especially for America's Cup, because Oyster Point Marina is primarily a leisure boating facility. So we look forward to, uh, to that, that opportunity to, to bring in more boaters. Yeah, yeah. How steep has been your, your learning curve since election? Well, actually, it's been, it's been quite steep. <laughs> and I've learned a lot. I mean, I, I remember just from... Uh, kind of doing a crash course on, you know, Harbors 101, um, it, it really was quite a challenge. Uh, you know, one may think, because I come from the Port of Oakland, working for the fifth mm -hmm. uh, busiest container port in the United States, that it would be similar. Actually, they're very different operations, and um, leisure boating is very different from uh, container right. vessels. Right, so. right. Um, now, you are a San Franciscan. You said you came here when you were two years old. Your family yes. is originally from where? From the Philippines. And so then you were raised in San Francisco's uh, Sunset, Richmond District? Richmond District, right, 48th and Fulton. 48th and Fulton. So right. how, how from that uh, history did you come to be an openly gay politician? What was your path? Well, it was And how supportive <laughs> was your family? It's kind of a strange path, mm -hmm. uh, very unusual. I basically uh, grew up on the peninsula, went to um, school in Daly City and Pacifica, then eventually settled in South San Francisco, where I still reside. Um, my parents moved down to the Central Valley, so I live here in Northern California with my brother. And basically, I went to college at UC Davis and then actually worked for the city and county of San Francisco at the DA's office. 
So that began sort of the, the political. Mm -hmm. um, and who, who was the DA, DA under who you uh, served? I, I served under Terrence Hallinan. Uh -huh. And that really was an eye opener in terms of just how politics was conducted in San Francisco. And that really kind of gave me a taste and a flavor for what it would be like. And I've always been active in the community, especially in San Mateo County. And so I've toyed with the idea of, of you know, running for something, but I never knew quite, you know, what would that be? What would that look like? Mm -hmm. And city council, I thought, you know, no, I just can't really do that. Right. And so running for a countywide office was something that really was not on my radar. What part of that career also jived with your coming out as a, as a gay man? Was it while you were at the DA's office? Was it before that? I actually came out in high school uh -huh. when I went to an all-boys uh, private school. And it was a very tough time because this was back in the early 80s, of course, during uh, just the very beginning of the AIDS crisis. And so it was a very tough time. And it was actually a time where there was a lot of activism and having worked with the Gay Asian Pacific Alliance in San Francisco, mm -hmm. that was another that was another opportunity to learn a lot about so it's, politics. You know, I also went to an all boys private high school, military Catholic school. Um, that wouldn't have been a really great environment to come out in. So you're braver than I was. What was the response of your fellow students? Well, I didn't come out to my classmates. Oddly enough, the first people I came out to were my parents, and they were very supportive. It's, it, they're, they're very um, kind of unorthodox uh, Filipinos. Um, mm -hmm. They're very progressive, and they basically said to me, you know, we, we knew. <laughs> you know, we, we knew you were. Mm -hmm. And I was completely floored by that because I didn't think, of course, you know, you never think that your parents know everything, but they really do. Mm -hmm. And so when I came out to them, it was no shock to them, and they're very supportive. They continue to be in my whole family, too, mm -hmm. all throughout the campaign because I did campaign as an openly gay man. Mm -hmm. You know, for a long time when we did have openly gay candidates or lesbian candidates, almost exclusively they were white. You know, it seemed like the face of the gay community was white male or white female. How have you seen in your years in public office and in politics the perception of what to be gay is uh, on the political front? And do you think we still have a long way to go? Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's changed tremendously, obviously. Mm -hmm. If you t just take a look at the, the broad swath of politicians in the Bay Area, mm -hmm. um, from the East Bay to the South Bay. And, and that really helped shape kind of my view of what a politician looks like because of the diversity of the Bay Area. And I feel very fortunate having grown up in the Bay Area. Um, and I think we do have a way to go still, mm -hmm. um, despite that, because there are still a lot of uh, stereotypes out there about um, gay Asians, about mm -hmm. gay people in general. And one of the things that I used to do was volunteer for uh, high schools where I talked to kids about what it's like to grow up gay and to tell them that, you know, it's okay to be gay and that you should feel proud about it. And the attitudes have changed a lot, and I'm, I'm really happy about that. The attitudes from the point of view of the students to whom you speak or from the instructors at the high schools? or just Both, uh -huh. but especially the students, because I remember a class where I spoke probably a, third graders or fourth graders back in the early 90s and I would ask the class, raise your hand how many people here know someone gay or lesbian? Probably one hand would creep up. And you know, just last year when, when I asked the uh, class, different class, um, mm -hmm. it, almost every hand went up and someone would shout out, you know, oh my uncle's gay or my neighbor's gay, my teacher's gay. You know, mm -hmm. So it's really changed a lot and that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. What has been um, the best part of being in politics for you? I mean, many people see you as a, a rising star within the Democratic Party and, you know, being recruited to, uh, to run for this, uh, an office which many people had never heard of. But they're like, this is a working office. This is something where you're going to gain knowledge that's really going to improve the lives of not only your gay constituents, but your non-gay constituents. What's been the best part of it? The best part is meeting all the people in San Mateo County. I mean, San Mateo County has 20 cities and 18 unincorporated towns. It has been an amazing journey, just visiting you know, all the different cities during the campaign and even now, uh, talking to different people, hearing about what they're interested in, and then if they l learn that I'm gay or realize that I'm gay, then that is an educational moment right mm -hmm. there. And so it's been meeting all the people, mm -hmm. really. You know, several of our guests uh, over the last few months have talked about the bullying and the teen suicides in uh, the last few months. When you heard about that, how did that 
make you feel? Did it throw you back to when you were a high school student, those years when you thought about coming out? I mean, did you ever go through something like that where you thought, I, I can't take the bullying, or were you bullied? I wasn't bullied because I was in the closet uh -huh. in school. Again, I came out to my parents first, and I would have never dreamed of coming out in high school to my classmates or my teachers. Because I mean, you that were afraid? Because I was afraid. I was afraid of being beaten up because I was afraid of being heckled in the hallways, having my locker trashed. And so I, I was absolutely tight-lipped when I was in high school. Of course, college was another story when I got to UC Davis, and that was a lot of fun, kind mm -hmm. of just growing and learning about myself as a gay man. But absolutely in high school, I would never have done anything like that. And I think that, I mean, we've come a long way. But when I hear about you know the stories that happen in the Bay Area as well as outside of California, you know, I, I think that there's still so much work to do in terms of education and getting out there and, and telling young people that it's okay to be different, it's okay to be gay, lesbian, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I think that, that we have a, a huge responsibility, especially um, elected officials, to continue to educate people about that. Great. We've been speaking with Robert Bernardo, Commissioner for the San Mateo Harbor Commission. Next up, we're going to learn all about the San Francisco International Asian American Film Festival. We'll be right back. Thanks so much.